As a developer and architect, I always want to build my product such that it can scale to reach its full potential. But designing such architectures is hard. But more importantly, it's super expensive. Patterns like microservice-based architectures have so many moving parts. First, there's always the requirement of specialized databases for things like search and geospatial queries. And if you're going event-driven, which you totally should, you're inviting a whole new breed of tools like Kafka and RabbitMQ to marry your stack. Each tool has its own learning curve attached to it, and running each tool costs money. What if I tell you that there is a way you can replace all these moving parts with a single tool? Well, you've probably guessed it because that's the title of this video. Shit. Redis has evolved way beyond its humble origins of being a cache. I think there is some serious power packed in this little baby. So let's start by looking at Redis as something we all have been using it for since ages. Let's start with Redis as an eventing system. Okay, this is a bit unusual, but it shouldn't be. Adding communication features to Redis was definitely one of the most impactful decisions the Redis team has ever taken. Unlike Kafka or RabbitMQ, Redis doesn't try to dictate how messaging should work. Kafka, for example, forces us to think of messaging as a unidirectional stream of events. Its architecture is hyper-specialized for scale. Unfortunately, this makes Kafka unsuitable for lightweight messaging patterns to power RPC-like use cases. And don't get me started about how complicated and expensive it is to manage even the tiniest Kafka cluster. Redis, on the other hand, is a multi-paradigm messaging broker. It provides multiple messaging semantics you can use based on your use case. Redis supports lightweight pop-up style messaging with at most once delivery. Also, creating new topics in Redis pops up is extremely easy and it can be done on the fly. This makes it a perfect candidate for RPC and fire and forget kind of use cases. Redis also has Redis streams for Kafka-like semantics. Redis streams provides at least once delivery which you can use when you want stronger guarantees. And since all of this is residing completely in memory, you can do interesting things like playing the stream in the reverse order. This can be great to achieve timeline rewind kind of functionality. Another interesting pattern you can achieve in Redis is work queues. You can use Redis lists to push jobs in a work queue which other worker processes can monitor. As compared to Redis streams, work queues gives us more flexibility for queuing and marking jobs as complete. The best part about Redis is that Redis has got first class support for transactions to take things to a whole new level. For example, Using transactions, a worker can store the job results back into Redis and mark the job as complete in a single atomic operation. Architects of event-driven system know exactly how powerful this can be. God, I got goosebumps just talking about it. Lastly, you can also implement distributed mutexes and semaphores in Redis. I hate using these, but sometimes you just can't avoid them. I strongly suggest you go through this guide to understand these patterns in more details. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now let's talk about using Redis as a cache. There are like a gazillion tutorials on this already and I don't want to repeat it. I'm just going to talk about the stuff that I think you should totally be hyped about. Number 1. Redis supports client-side caching. Normally we talk about Redis as a distributed cache. This means our apps need to make a network call to a centralized Redis cluster to check if we've got a cache hit. This works great, but for certain applications, the additional network hop may add an undesirable amount of latency. I know, people want their apps to be fast. Don't blame me for it. To avoid this extra hop, Redis supports a very elaborate mechanism to allow clients to cache Redis data in the application's memory. As we all know, the biggest problem with caching is cache invalidation. How do you remove data from a client's cache when data is removed from Redis? Our boy Redis solves this for us. It uses the messaging constructs we spoke about earlier to send cache invalidation signals to the clients. How cool is that? To be clear, this invalidation logic is only for client-side caching. Invalidation of the cache in Redis when data in your primary database changes it's still up to you to figure out. Yeah, life is hard, isn't it? Another problem Redis helps us solve is when using Redis as a write-back cache. 
in a write back cache, we first write data to our cache and then update the backing database asynchronously. This makes writes and mutations super fast. Unfortunately, the mechanism to sync the writes or dirty keys to the backing database is a bit complicated. Redis pops up to the rescue. I told you, messaging in Redis was a superb idea. In Redis, I can use the key space notifications feature to publish an event whenever a key is modified in Redis. Now I can simply subscribe to these events and write the corresponding data to my database as a background process. This makes working with write-back caches so much easier. Keyspace notification works primarily with the Redis PubSub feature, which doesn't have strong delivery guarantees. Having said that, there are ways to put the event in a Redis stream instead to make the process more robust. Redis is indeed the next-gen cache. Want to know why Redis is so cool? It's because they're subscribed to this channel. Okay, they're not. But you can, and that's what really matters. Do like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. The last thing that I've got for you is using Redis as a database. Boy, I can go on and on about this one. Just to be clear, Redis cannot replace your primary database. That would be stupid, and I'm not stupid. I'm not. Just like with messaging, Redis is a use case specific database. What I mean is, Redis has got extremely rich data types like sorted sets and intelligent operators like Zrank, which makes modeling complex patterns relatively easy. Let's take an example of building a leaderboard. Here we would have hundreds or even thousands of users who need to be ranked based on their score. Sure, you can achieve this in any general purpose database, but try to imagine the load a leaderboard system can generate. Each action a user performs can influence the score of that user. And like any real-time system, the new updated rankings will have to be propagated to all subscribed participants in real time. That's a lot of reads and writes. So instead of having a beefier database to power this real-time use case, we can use Redis. Like I mentioned earlier, sorted sets and the Z-rank operation are perfect for this. And since everything is in memory, it's blazing fast. I remember the keyspace notifications feature we spoke about earlier. You can use that to relay the mutations back to your primary data store. Building a leaderboard with Redis is such a popular use case that searching for the terms leaderboard implementation on Google is bound to get a Redis powered solution in the top three results. By the way, this post that you see here, yeah, this one, it discussed building a leaderboard using Redis as well. And this post, it's by Google, so it doesn't count. Two out of two for Team Redis. There is a lot more use cases that Redis can power. You can do search, graph, and even geospatial queries on Redis. There is just no end to it. Let me know if you want me to make a dedicated video on this. I strongly suggest you start using Redis for such use cases. Trust me, it will save you a lot of money. All three aspects of Redis we just saw today play really well together. On top of that, features like transactions and the modules API make them even more powerful. If you guys want, we can hop onto a live stream to see all of this in action. I like to look at Redis as a stepping stone. Once my product is mature enough, I can move on to adopt more complicated beasts like Kafka and Elasticsearch. But for many of us, Redis can continue to serve us for a lifetime. You just saw how you can build a scalable and affordable architecture using Redis. Now your next step should be to check out this video where I talk about how you can leverage event-driven architectures to take your system design to a whole new level. Do like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and don't forget, I am your tech bot, you're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.